Good morning, everyone. Our first topic in General Biology 1 for quarter 2 is all about ATP and reaction coupling. So I will share to you the most important processes of ATP. So what is ATP? ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So ATP is considered as the universal energy currency for metabolism. Okay, so as an overview for our topic, so living cells require energy from outside sources. Some animals obtain energy by eating plants and some animals feed on other organisms that eat plants. So energy flows into an ecosystem as sunlight and leaves as heat. And um, photosynthesis generates oxygen and organic molecules which are used in cellular respiration. So basically, cells use chemical energy stored in organic molecules to regenerate ATP, which powers work. Okay. All right. So um, ATP is the energy unit of the cell. ATP is composed of adeno, adeno group, uh, sugar, or the ribose and three phosphates. So ADP is easily recycled. The cell converts um, adenosine diphosphate or ADP into ATP by the addition of phosphate. So as you look at it, here in ATP, uh, there are only two phosphate molecules, while in ATP, we have uh, three uh, phosphate molecule, molecules, that's why it's called tri, triphosphate, meaning three molecules of phosphates. Okay. Okay, an overview of how ATP is produced. All right. So on your screen is the illustration of energy flow and chemical recycling in ecosystems. But before this, let's talk about, um, about redox, redox reactions or the oxygen and reduction. So um, the transfer of electrons during chemical reactions releases energy stored in organic molecules. Okay, so this released energy is ultimately used to what? To synthesize ATP or adenosine triphosphate. All right, so um, chemical reactions that transfer electrons between reactants are called oxidation reductions reactions or redox reactions so in oxidation a substance loses electrons or is oxidized so in reduction a substance gains electrons or is reduced so the amount of positive charge is reduced All right. So ATP powers cellular work by coupling exergonic reactions to endergonic reactions. Okay, so what are the differences between the two? So exergonic reactions releases energy and it happens during the cell respiration and catabolism. While endergonic reaction requires energy and it happens mostly uh, during active transport, cell movements, and anabolism. Okay, so, um, all right, so a cell does three main kinds of work. We have chemical, transport, and mechanical. Okay, so um, going back to exergonic and endergonic reaction. So in, in the uh, exergonic reaction, it's synthesis, uh, the synthesis of ATP from ADP 
and um, phosphate uh, inorganic is endergonic. So meaning it requires energy. The PI there means um, phosphate inorganic. So it comprises of four oxygen atom but then covalently to a phosphorus atom so while in endergonic reaction the hydrolysis of atp to adp and a phosphate inorganic is exergonic so basically it releases energy okay so um, addition to that um to do work Cells manage energy resources by energy coupling. So the use of an exergonic process to drive an endergonic one, so most energy coupling in cells is medi mediated or mediated by the, no other than the energy or the ATP. Okay. So, once again, ATP uh, stands for adenosine triphosphate. So, they are the cell's energy shuttle. So, it, uh, ATP is composed of uh, ribose or the sugar, um, adenosine or the uh, nitrogenous base, and three, um, excuse me, three phosphate groups. Okay. All right. So the bonds between the phosphate phosphate groups of ATP steel can be broken by hydrolysis, the application of water. So energy is released from ATP when the terminal phosphate bond is broken. Okay. So um this third um this third phosphate bond contains lots of energy so this release of energy comes from the chemical change to a state of um a lower free energy not from the phosphate bonds themselves okay next one all right so how ATP drives transport and mechanical work? So we have, again, we have three types of cellular work. We have mechanical, the transport, and the chemical. So each is powered by the hydrolysis of ATP. So in the cells, um, the energy from an exergonic reaction of ATP hydrolysis can be used to drive an endergonic uh, reaction. Okay, so ATP drives endergonic reaction by phosphorylation. Uh, so through it, the transferring of phosphate group to some other molecule such as reactant. So the recipient molecule is now um, phosphorylated. So the process of phosphorylation converts relatively low energy compound or the ADP uh, into a higher energy compound which is the ATP. So ADP or the adenosine diphosphate contains an uh, adenosine group, a ribose sugar or a ribose, a ribose group, and two phosphate groups or two phosphate molecules. Okay, so uh, this is the ATP cycle. So ATP can be produced from existing ADP molecules. So uh, a phosphate is added um, is added to ADP at the mitochondria. So it requires um, ATP synthesis. So what is the function of this ATP synthesis? So the ATP synthesis, uh, it is a protein complex in the mitochondria that acts a mo uh, molecular meal and converts ADP into ATP. 
Okay, so the last important process is the regeneration of ATP. So ATP is a renew, uh, renewable resource that is regenerated by addition of a phosphate group to adenosine diphosphate or the ATP. So um, it requires ATP synthase and um, H ion or hydrogen ion from the water. So the energy is phosphorylate. Uh, phosphorylate ADP comes from catabolic reactions in the cell. So the chemical potential energy temporarily stored in ATP can be used to drive most cellular work. So um, the cells can uh, work 100% um, without this source of energy, the ATP. Okay, so that would be all with for today's lecture. Make sure to comment your name, section, and your key takeaways. So uh, it will serve as your daily attendance. Thank you and see you all in our next science lecture. God bless.